et bonjour. Today I want to give you an accessibility evaluation of the Beranger Neutron or Beranger Neutron, whatever you prefer. This is only for visually impaired and blind people. This is not a review, this is not a tutorial. You'll find loads of good reviews and tutorials on YouTube. Sonic State did a very good Sonic Lab when the Neutron was first released and Loopop did a good review and overview tutorial when firmware version 2 was released. So this is just about accessibility and we'll talk about the interface, the instrument itself, the layout, lights, we'll talk about the manual, the documentation, the software, both firmware updater and the new editor and finally I will give you a layout description of the top panel and the rear panel so you could go at it completely alone without any sighted help. Well most of it is quite obvious but it does help to have a description up front. So let's give it a go. <laughs> begin with the most important part though and that is the user interface, the instrument itself. It's a small instrument, comparatively speaking, though I find the interface very uncluttered and big enough to get around without knocking too many things. The most problematic thing you might come across is knocking the tuning pots of the oscillators if you grab for the mix knob or the wave shape knob. Still, even sighted people have these problems and there was a suggestion somewhere that you could exchange the tuning pots, though that would involve some skill. Still, there's a possibility, if you're particularly anxious of detuning your instrument once you've set it up, if you go for the mix knob, you can always go along the top of the instrument till you find the filter button and then go down, grab the mix knob and, well, if you go for the wave shapes, you could just go down the bottom of the instrument and work your way up. It's not a big deal at all. Well, let's talk about lights next. The instrument does have lights and they of course give you information, they can help you, though you don't have to rely on them, it's all very very immediate. There are no menus as such, there are a few things that you can set, though that's done with mostly one combination of, of knobs and oh, buttons. And then you can mostly step through things, so yeah. Lights will help you if you can see them. The oscillated tuning feature could be quite handy if you can see the top LED on the LFO uh, wave shape knob. But yeah, as I said, it's no problem. All the lights, by the way, are very eye-friendly, so if you're sensitive to bright lights, good news. Most of them are orange and very dim. Or dim enough. There are a few blue ones, though not eye-piercingly bright. The most annoying one could be the s and clock LED. Um, that is sort of bright, but not as bad as I've seen on other synthesizers. And of course, if you don't need sample and hold, you can turn it right down so it won't flash that often. Yeah. All in all, good interface and you can definitely get around there whether you can see a bit or whether you can't. Next, let's quickly talk about the software. The Neutron in itself is very self-sufficient, but there is an editor and there's a firmware updater. So, firmware updater first. I had a problem with firmware updater for version 2. The start button was not visible. I suppose you may solve that problem with something like the OCR or another on-screen OCR software that you may have on Mac or Windows. After that, though, everything was fine. So, I could read the update status, got the finished statement and all the buttons. So, well, that's fine. And maybe next time round, 
even the starting problem would have been solved. Next, the editor, though, is a very, very pleasant surprise. It's, I think, the first accessible editor that I've seen. And it looks good. Very clean, very no-nonsense about it. So, well, you may want to check that out. Next, let's talk about the Béranger website and the user's manual. Personally, I didn't find the Béranger website to be a very pleasant experience, although I did manage to get where I wanted to and I did manage to download what I needed to. That said, my MacBook is quite old, so, well, you might find that quite a different experience. And I must say, too, that it seems that Béranger has put some work into the website, so there may have been changes. The user's manual, on the other hand, I found very useful, very straight and very textual. So even in the patching section, uh, they explained all the patches, all the things that you need to connect in the patch bay and knobs that you need to set in text. So no need to decipher images or get someone else to look over it. If you are looking more for a manual describing synthesis, giving you more of an idea what things do, and that's not it, but there are very good online reviews and tutorials by Sonic State, by Loopop, by other people too. If you're interested more in the in the modular side of things, I think it is uh, Myla Melanie Snow Diffkit who's done a good series of videos about that, so you should find more than enough. <laughs> Now the rear panel, we have the power input going left to right. Power input, power button, MIDI through port. And next, I think that's the dip switches. Feels a bit like um, an old style connector. Then there's the headphones volume pod. And then the three audio connections. That's headphones out, main out and audio in. Next to that, if you feel along this small hole, and that's what they call the boot port. You only need that when you do firmware updates and it's the thing where you push in with a pa unmanned paper clip while booting. It's all very simple. And here at last, as promised, is the layout overview. This is only important to blind people or people so visually impaired they can't read what's printed on the instrument. So we'll start to the left with the oscillator section. Seven knobs sort of in the shape of an arch. In the top middle is oscillator one mix and then down, running down the sides exactly mirrored. At the top, the big knob is tuning, wave shape and at the bottom there's pulse width or tone. Between those, we have a few buttons. To the left, oscillator 1 range. To the right, oscillator 2 range. You can feel the LEDs above those. Underneath the oscillator range buttons in the middle is oscillator sync. And at the bottom, there is paraphonic. Going back up to the top and to the right of the oscillator, we start with a filter section. There's a button right at the top with three LEDs underneath that. You can feel those again. That's filter type. And then there's a row of knobs going down at the top. Filter frequency, cutter frequency, resonance. Then there's a button. That's filter key tracking. Then we have filter mod amount, normals to LFO. And filter envelope amount. Going back up to the top and 
To the right of the filter section, there's the LFO. We have a button at the top. You can feel the LED slightly to the right above that. That's the LFO key sync. So, um, underneath that, a bit to the right, is the big knob, the LFO wave shape. It has the LEDs around it. Uh, well, you can't really feel those. And at the top, slightly above that, to the right, is the LFO rate. The LFO rate knob starts a row of knobs at the top. That is LFO rate. Delay time, delay feedback, delay mix and output volume. And to the right of that, there's the MIDI port. Okay, going down right from the big LFO waveform knob, there's another row of five knobs. That is first distortion amount, distortion character. Feels a bit like um, a kind of a Q, tilt a Q. So to the left it's dark, to the right it's bright. Then you have the distortion, well, I don't know what it's, what it's called, compensation volume, because it can get very loud, so you can turn it down there. And then you have the clock for the sample and hold, clock speed, and finally sample and hold slew. Okay, we go back to the left again. Going down the filter knobs, we had, you remember, cutoff frequency resonance, mod amount and envelope and the mod amount and filter envelope amount they start two rows of knobs at the bottom eight each so the top row is filter mod amount white noise mix adsr for the volume and envelope one and then there's slew for the slew limiter and portamento going down the bottom row starts with Filter envelope amount, then amp bias, sort of drone, then the ADSR for the filter envelope, and finally there's attenuator one and attenuator two amount. To the right of that, there's the patch bay. So it's eight rows, seven eight, or seven jacks each. And you should know that the first four columns are inputs. And the last three columns are outputs. And you can really go directly by the manual. So let's have a look. In the manual you'll find on the input side element 45 oscillator 1, 46 oscillator 2, 47 oscillator 1 plus 2, 40, huh? 8, 9, whatever. The next one at least is inverter in. So that's the first four. It's the first row. And then you go down and then you have... Wave shape 1, wave shape 2, pulse width 1, pulse width 2, second row. Same for the outputs. So we start in the fifth column and then we have at 77 in the manual, element 77, oscillator 1 out, oscillator 2 out, oscillator mix. And then the next VCF1 is the next row. So you can really go by that and I personally made myself a cheat sheet so I could always have an overview. Well, I hope that was useful. Thanks for listening. Enjoy playing your instruments. Bye.